bill millions and billions of YouTube views, huge hits worldwide, big shows, Coachella, you name it, he's done it. His name is Martin Garrix, he's going to be in conversation with Ben Bowman, Thomas from The Guardian. He's going to be on stage man, in roughly a minute or two. First, an introduction to Martin. trying to steal alcohol from my parents' cabinet, uh, whereas Martin, on the other hand, was starting to put out these incredible tracks of really kind of taking on a life of their own uh, and become kind of supernova massive. And I really wanted to sort of start out by, by asking, you know, when you were that age, you know, early teenager, how, how did you kind of first start even thinking that you wanted to make music? Well, for me, Thanks, by the way, everybody for being here. I'm very excited. Um, you know, for, me, for me, it all started... Um, I, I started playing the guitar at a very young age. I grew up in a super musical family. Um, and at one moment, I started writing songs on the guitar, but then every time I had to present it to someone, I had to grab my guitar, play it, and... Then I did some research, I found a program uh, that allowed me to put my ideas in the computer and choose different sounds, add kick drums, add percussion, add bass lines, and I know it started as a hobby and, and it still is a hobby, and for me the craziest thing, it, for example, just being here, is, it, it, it feels crazy to me, and everything that has happened the last 10 years since the moment I decided, yo, I'm gonna make music because I like making music, it's been it's been a roller coaster. Oh, why did you go down the sort of the dance music path as opposed to the kind of strumming and guitar kind of music path? Well, for me, I I make all different types of genres as music. If I feel like making a hip hop song, I make a hip hop song, and then I don't release as Martin Garrix. But I feel like everybody in the music industry who loves music, you're not you're not listening to one genre. You're, you're, I I'm, I like to listen to for every mood that I'm in, I have a different type of genre I listen to and a different type of genre that I like to make. But for me, I got in touch um, with electronic music in 2004, because I heard Chesto at the Olympics. And just to me, the kick drum, the feeling it gave me, it, 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 it got me all energetic, excited, hyped, and I was like, yo, I, I want to do this. And I started buying all these vinyls, um, um, compilation CD, CDs, and I just started listening to it and having fun. I think you saw in the video, DJ Marty, it's uh, so adorable, right? <laughs> it was, How old were you in that in that film? That was you looked I, about eight years old. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think I was like maybe ten. Right. And then I would DJ at the local wedding, get like fifteen euros and and keep it and invest it in like a, a, a new light or a new CD player or something. And you got a sick smoke machine. Like that's no, I I like. had like a scanner, like a cool light with like a mirror and. I saved up money for it and I was so excited when I could finally buy it and that was like DJing wise but also production wise I started with a simple 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 setup I feel like a lot of teenagers have right now just two studio monitors and a computer and I also have a MIDI keyboard and my guitar and I just started having fun and um, then piece by piece bit by bit I started like after the first check I got, I bought a better computer because it always got stuck when I was working on a song and I don't know, I just started having fun. And then you went to an actual production school, that's right, and you sort, yeah. of, you sort of quit your, your technical studies and moved towards musical studies. What, what, what did that give yeah. you that you, you um, wouldn't have got it had you not gone there? For me, I, um, I got signed to my first label at the age of 14. 
um, and I got in touch with that label because I was uh, producing for other artists. I was like a ghost producer. I was. Um, <laughs> How were you getting in touch with other artists when you were 14? Were these like? I would just spam their emails. I would yeah. sneak in into festivals with my USBs with music on it, <laughs> and 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 give it to one of one of the artists, or just spam their emails. Um, I was a lot on internet forums talking with other producers and. I don't know, then some people reached out to me, I did one song that got signed on Spinner Records and um, they were like, yo, we heard this kid is 14 and they didn't believe that was real, so they invited me at the office, then they wanted to see me work because they didn't believe I made my own stuff. And then we started to work and then to get back about the school, while I was signed, I was still doing the technical study and I tried to combine it um, in the first two, three years, but I had a friend who was going to the production academy and while I was doing like science or like um, like homework, he was like, yo man, I have to make a song for homework for this school. This school is amazing. Um, and I had one year left in the, in, the, in, the, in the technical school, but then I just went to my parents and was like, hey, I really love music so much. I, I, it makes me happy. I, I, I wake up with music during the day, I listen to music, I fall asleep with music, and I really feel I can, I can, I can follow this, this path. And, First, my parents were like a little bit in shock, but then after two days, they were like, you know what? If you are happy, we're happy. And I feel like that moment, my parents were really, their support, without their support, I wouldn't have not been here because I'm very thankful and very blessed to have their support. And then I switched to the production school. And then in the first year of that school, I did um, a song called Animals. And that was for me, the song that literally twist, like switched my life going from a bedroom producer to, as you saw in the video, to like the, the bigger main stages and it all feels surreal because it all happens super quick. But do you, do you think that you can actually, you know, people out here who may be tinkering in their bedrooms, um, can you kind of do it all from your bedroom these days? You, you know, the technology is there effectively to make uh, an animals. I feel like there's, it, there's, you can get all the technology you want, you can get all the plugins you want, but in the end it's about the songs, it's about it's about the ideas, it's about if you if you if you're passionate about something, not only music, if you're passionate about something, I feel like if you put enough time in it, if you work hard enough, you gain more experience, you get better and better. And to all the upcoming producers and DJs out there who are like, oh I've limited limited production software, etc. There's not that much you need. I start I made animals on, on my in my bedroom. And I did the mastering and mixing myself. Uh, so there is a lot possible from just your computer. How, how did you, on a practical level, learn those skills of mastering, mixing? You know, I think quite a lot of people are able to cobble together a, a track on Logic or Ableton or Fruity Loops, but then to kind of make it really kick, how, what, how did you learn that craft? I watched a shitload of tutorials. <laughs> um, no, and I think uh, also when you collaborate with someone, I worked a lot with other artists. You, they, they, they teach you new tricks. You teach, you teach them new tricks, and also just spending time in the studio, experimenting with new sounds, trying out new things, making mistakes. Because making mistakes is a big part of growing. Um, I feel like from every mistake that I made in the studio, I was like, I pressed the wrong button. I'm like, yo, this sounds cool. And the next time I want to make a sound like that, I know how to make a sound. So, yeah. I just love it. Yeah, and, and you, you know, you came up during a time when the sort of dubstep, bassy sound was quite dominant, and then we've sort of seen how a kind of tropical house sound has sort of moved in to become more popular. You know, you you haven't ever really chased those fashions. How how do you kind of resist the the, the popular thing right now and, and kind of stay true to your own vision? And, and what is that vision? Because I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm not gonna make music. Like when I'm in the studio, I literally, it's my happy place. I literally sit there. And I'm like, yo, what am I gonna make today? And I make whatever I feel like making. I'm not gonna. T if you think too much about what you're gonna make, it takes away from the creative process. If I think too much, like, oh, people wanna hear this. This is big right now. I will have a shit day in the studio. I literally go in the studio, blank canvas, do whatever I feel like, and those are the most successful days for me in the studio. Uh, what, what, what does that process look like when you? as you say, have a blank canvas, how do you start to build a track? Well, the fun thing about making music is there are no rules. It's not like a step process. Sometimes I grab a guitar, I just start jamming, 
or, or, or someone's like, go listen to cool sounds. I'm like, yo, this, this is a crazy sound. What if I do this melody with it? Sometimes I just grab a MIDI keyboard, like a piano sound, and make a chord, chord progression, and then afterwards I'll find the right sound to match it. Um, yeah, I like that there are no rules there, so you can just do whatever you feel like. Mm. And, and something that I think that no matter how much tinkering you do in your bedroom or how many lessons you have at a production school um, that you can't learn in those scenarios is obviously playing out to a crowd, um, working a crowd. How did you, I mean, we saw you absolutely destroying the, uh, the wedding disco crowd there. How did you work out um, how to sort of build up and, and manipulate uh, an audience live? I think it's all about just from experience. I, um, I've been like, I'm not gonna call it doing shows because it was at weddings. But I started when I was like nine or ten, and then when I was 15, 14, I got signed. And then the booking started, and then I started full on touring when I was 16. And I'm 21 now, so I've been just been touring like a crazy person for the last five years, making music and. From everything, from every show, from every setting, you learn, you get more experience. And what have some of the most valuable things that you've picked up along the way been in terms of maturing you as, a, as an artist in, um, that, in those experiences? Well, for me, I started like just doing the shows by myself, and then I started. This is like more t technical. Then I started expanding my team. I started a tour manager. Then uh, made sure I got out of my bed in time. I made sure I catch my flight because we had some issues with that sometimes. <laughs> and then I started having a visual guy who did like the visuals on the screens, a lighting guy, a production manager, stage manager, security, and then piece by piece the whole crew. Only uh, on Martin Garrick's touring part is like sometimes we do shows where it's 20 people of crew. Mm. And yeah, that's that's really crazy. They're all super experienced. They all give me advice. Um, and we, we, like every show, we have a camera at the front of house to film the show. And afterwards, we go analyze it and make notes. We're like, yo, this, this part was tight, that part could be better. And we just have fun. I, I feel like the whole, the whole vibe in, in Team Garrix is, is, is good vibes. It doesn't feel like we're working. We're having fun. We get to make people happy. We get to see people smile. And to me, that, that's no work. That's, that's, that's a blessing. It's a hobby. I mean, we saw in that, that montage, you know, you're hopping on private jets and uh, the CO2 cannons going off in an arena. It's the kind of teenage life that many teenagers kind of dream of. Are, are there things that you feel like you miss out on because you've been on the road for hundreds of days a year? Well, sometimes I miss, like, uh, I have a sister. Sometimes I miss her a lot, and my parents, of course. But um, that was in the, in the beginning part. Now, now because the fees are getting higher, the shows are getting bigger, and I can bring people with me on the road. I have a childhood friend of mine, he's here now. I, I always have people close to me, around me, no matter where I am. Everywhere I go, I, I love being surrounded with people who, who, who know me before all the crazy shit. Mm. Uh, something that I think is really interesting is how, you know, you mentioned Spinning Records, who you uh, put out some of your early work on, and then uh, you actually end up sort of going through a lawsuit to sort of extricate yourself from that um, that label, and you created your own label. Yeah. Um, what did that, that that whole process teach you? Well, um, I love the entire team at Spinning Records, but for me, there was a moment where it just felt wrong. That the moment I created something in my studio, they take it. It's theirs immediately. It, it doesn't even have to be finished yet. It's like. You have a baby and you're proud of it and someone comes, haha, that's mine. And, and lots of other stuff, I don't want to get into that too much, but long story short, I ended up like, fuck it, I'm going to do it myself. Um, and it's going super well now. I did my first, like all the singles I did last year were on the new label. I just took over a studio building in Amsterdam, which we're renovating. And it's one of the most iconic studios in Amsterdam. And uh, they, were, they reached out to me, they were like, yo, hey, we're gonna close the studio down, we're gonna sell the equipment, uh, is there, are you interested in some of the equipment? I was like, yo, why are you guys closing down the studio? Because I, like, I remember the first time I entered the studio, I was like, wow, look at all this hardware, look at, like, it was a, a, a dream. And then I heard they were gonna sell, and I was like, nope, I'm not gonna do that. So um, I heard they were gonna close it, I took over the studio building. Um, with the crew that's still in there, we're renovating all the studios for stamp recordings for my label, and 
I want to use it as a platform for new talent, new artists to, to have a creative environment mm -hmm. and most importantly just to make cool music and, and share it with the world. Yeah, I mean cause this is I think what is so interesting about the moment we find ourselves in in the music industry is that increasingly you can just um, go it alone, you don't need a major label to support you, you can kind of do everything yourself. Are you surprised that more artists don't do what you've done and, and take control of of every aspect from the you know the marketing to the production to the uh, all these different kind of parts that traditionally another company has done well for me i just took everything under my own company i have i have amazing people who do my marketing I, but right now there's i think about 60 people working just for martin carrix and it's on the booking side management side security touring side everything and um yeah, I, th I, 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 I like my label. I signed the I signed the big singles out to Sony, so I still have a major helping me, supporting me, um, pushing the songs to like the, the bigger the bigger audience. But mm. no, for me, doing everything in house, you're able to move so much quicker. And and I don't know. I also I love the team. I surround myself with people who inspire me, people who I look up to, people who. Who want to make me work harder? Who want to? Who, who want? Who don't want me to fall? Like I don't want to fall asleep because I want to. I want to work. I want to. I want to. I want to tour the world with them. I want to make music. I want to have fun and see people smile. To me, getting to share those experiences, creating a team of people around me who I look up to, inspiring me, and that yeah, it's it's amazing. And, and how do you kind of find new artists? I mean, we've heard a lot of um, stories from a &Rs in the past about who, who now, you know, they don't go down to a pub or a bar to try and find the next big thing. They'll trawl through SoundCloud, they'll, they'll trawl online. How, what are the methods that you use to try and find the most exciting new people? I, it's everywhere. Sometimes it's, it's sometimes work, like if, if someone says, yo, this artist is sick. Um, for me, how I did it a lot, I, I just put on Spotify random. Uh, or discover new music and when there's a song I like I put it in my playlist and I ended up with a playlist with sick music and then I reached out to those guys like hey um, I have my label you want to release music here and we sign people just with one off tracks we don't need the whole headache deal like yo we need this amount of songs for the next four years because because I know as an artist that's not it, it, you feel a little bit trapped and I just want an artist I want to have a platform for artists to just feel good about their music. I don't want to screw them with, with money and stuff. I don't need to make money. Like touring-wise, my own music is going great. I just want to have a platform for for new, young, upcoming talent. Sometimes old people. I don't care if it's good. It, it's good. And also with the label, I don't only want to do electronic music. I want to do all different types of genres. We've been releasing one song every week now for the last month, and one song was a hip hop song. And I like diversity. Yeah, because that, that way of releasing music is feels like oh, increasingly the, the, the way it's done. We're, we're less sort of focused on a big album drop project and, and, and more now trickling music out. I mean, you, you have uh, hundreds of, of songs that are in your kind of vault. Do you, do you, do you plan to release an, an album in a traditional way or, it, or is that kind of over as a, as I, a format? I can release three albums right now with the amount of unreleased music I have but um, I don't know I'd rather cherry pick and, and, and pick all the best ideas and release those as singles because last year I did I released seven songs in seven days and I was really proud of all seven songs but then the attention went to only three of those seven songs and is that hard when when certain things don't break through in the way? No, it's 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 fun. It's it's interesting because there were songs that I was like, "Yo, this is gonna be a hit." I feel so good about this song. I can't wait to to the word hears this. This will definitely crush the charts. And then it ended up not being big. And Animals was a song, uh, which was number one in UK for me. That was a song that really lifted up everything. And I already had that song two years on my computer. The the, the main melody in the breakdown because I was like. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And I listened to it back again one day, and I was in bed at night, I, and the melody was stuck in my head, and I was like, yo, maybe I should do something with it. So, you never know. As soon as you release a song, it's a whole new life, it's, and, and I don't know, I like it. And, and just briefly, what's, you know, you're still so young, what is, what do you see your career looking like in even by the time you're 30 years old? 
do you have a sense of, of where you want to go next? Well, of course, as Martin Garrix, uh, producer, DJ, I want to I wanna always keep the shows going on, a, on like next level, next level, next level. I want to release music that represents me, music that makes people happy. And um, on the side, I want to build stamped records as like, um, just as I said, the platform for new, new artists, new talent into the world. And most importantly, just having fun, bringing my family and my friends with me on tour and, and enjoying uh, every second. Because there's so much crazy shit happening. And for me, there's no better feeling than being able to share it with the people I love and care about. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Martin. Martin Gary, everyone.